to the book of Exodus, chapter 15. The book of Exodus, that's the second book in the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, chapter 15. And I want to bring you a thought to this morning from the Bible here that uh, I hope will be a blessing to you in Exodus chapter 15. Look at Exodus chapter 15 and 23. Let's go ahead and read 22. Exodus 15 verse 22. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Shur. And they went out three days in the wilderness and found no water. And when they came to Marah, They could not drink of the waters of Merah, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of it was called Merah. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried unto the Lord. And the Lord showed him a tree, which he had cast into the waters. The waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statute and an ordinance, and there he proved them, and said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. And they came to Elam, and there were twelve wells of water, and three score palm trees, and they encamped there by the waters. You'll notice up there in verse 25, we'll find a thought for the message. And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. And when he had cast in waters, the waters were made sweet. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come before Thee this morning, we thank You for this day. Thank You for our help. Thank You for our strength. Thank You for all the many, many blessings of life, dear Lord, that You've given us. Now, dear Lord, as we come before You this morning, we pray that You'd forgive us of all of our sins, every idle word, every thought, every intention, every action, every deed, every desire, anything that's wrong or sinful in our lives. We pray that You'd forgive us. We thank You for these that are here. Oh, dear God, please help us this morning that we might say what ought to be said. That will not be what we say. Dear God, I pray for these young men, young ladies, moms and dads, boys and girls, whom you've brought to this place this morning. Oh, Lord, have mercy upon us and speak through thy word. Help us, Lord, to learn to trust thee in hours of trial and darkness and trouble and whatever and however. And what way ever you do for us, we'll praise you and thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, in this Bible story this morning, I want to give you just a little background and give you a thought that I thought might be a help to you and a blessing to you. Moses was leading the children of Israel across the country. He's the leader... A big crowd of them is following him. Now, as long as everything went right and they had plenty to eat and things were taken care of and God was taking care of their enemies, everything was fine. But once in a while they'd get themselves in a mess that wouldn't be so fine and they would gripe and complain until God had to help them out. And they came to these waters here and... Everybody started, they hadn't eaten, drunk any water in three days. And so they got them some water, and the waters were bitter. I don't know if it was something in the water, they were stagnated, or uh, uh, something rotten, in, or dead fish, or what. But anyway, the water just couldn't uh, be, be, be drunk. It, was, it tastes terrible. It was bitter. 
And they said, man, what do you got us out here going to starve us to death and we're going to die of starvation because we can't drink this water? Do something about it. So Moses goes over here and he prays the Lord. And he said, Lord, the people are driving me crazy. You're going to have to help them or I'm going to hit one of them if you don't help me. And the Lord said, now calm down, son. If you don't quit learning how to control your spirit, you're going to get in trouble. And Moses said, but Lord, they're complaining because the waters are bitter. And the Lord said, look over there. And he looked over there and God showed him a tree. And he said, you see that tree over there? And Moses said, yeah, what's got to do with this? Listen to me. All of you ain't listening. I'll wait till y'all listening. That's better. Now, he said, see that tree right over there? And Moses said, yeah. And the Lord said, cut it down. And boy, they sawed that thing down. And the Lord said, take that tree and put it in those waters. And he took that tree and put it in that water. And as soon as he did that, the waters were made sweet. And it tastes just like from the Blue Ridge Mountains water right here in North Carolina. And brother, I want you to know they begin to drink that water and it began to... I'm waiting till all of you are listening. Now y'all going to listen if you're going to sit in here. Okay? Better. Now, he said, take that tree, sit into the water. And so what he did, the waters were made sweet. Man, they began to fill up canteens. They began to fill up cups. They began to fill up bowls. And boy, they began to drink that stuff. And everything was wonderful. Now, you know what the secret was? The tree. The tree. The tree. Now, God put that in the Bible for a reason. You know why God put that in the Bible? It was for a purpose. You know what the Lord could have done? The Lord could have just said, be sweet. And made those waters sweet without a tree. The Lord could have said, uh, I'll drop something out of heaven. The Lord could have made a spring of fresh water come up over across the way. But God chose to cast the tree in the bitter waters to make them become sweet. Note what happened. Now the tree in the Old Testament represents the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. It always is a picture of that. That's what Christ was crucified on a tree. The Bible said in 1 Peter chapter 2, Who His own self bore our sins on the tree. He was crucified on a cross made from a tree. Now what God is saying in this Bible story this morning is in my life and in your life, you're going to come to bitter waters. There's going to come a time in your life when life is bitter. There's going to come a time in your life when you have to cry and you have to look up to see the bottom. There's going to come a time in your life when it seems like the whole world has crashed in around you. There's going to be a time in your life when it seems like you have nowhere to turn, nothing to... It just seems like everybody has failed you. Your family's turned against you. You're having marriage problems. You can't pay your bills. You can't get a job. Bitter waters will come to everybody. And God's teaching us a lesson here. And He's teaching us that if we will look to the cross, if we'll look to the cross of Jesus Christ in our hard, bitter days, it will make those bitter waters sweet that we can go through the problems and trials of this life. He told Moses to cast it in there, teaching us how to face life's trouble. You know, I have people talk to me all the time, and they'll say, Brother, it seem like everything's going wrong. And I have people call on the telephone, and they'll say, I've just got laid off from my job. I've got kids to support. Or I have people call and say, I just found out uh, my wife's left me. My, 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 my job, I've lost my job, been fired. I'm being, being transferred or this that. And they say, I just don't know what I'm going to do. If I can tell you what to do this morning, you look back 2,000 years ago and see a man walk up a hill, put his hands out on an old rugged cross, and let him nail those hands in those cross, and let your problems through the cross, and the Lord will turn those bitter waters into sweet. Now, there's many things that we go through in this life, and you young folks this morning probably... You know, this ain't going to mean a whole lot to you because you haven't had many problems. The older you get, the more problems you have. The older you get, the more things go wrong. And I promise you, there will come a time when you'll cry. 
There will come a time when you'll feel like everything is going wrong. There will come a time when you'll just... It, it, it seems like it all piles in on you at once, you know. seems like you're going pretty good and you can pay your bills. Everything's going wonderful. And then this happens. And then that happens. And then something else happens. And about the same time it blows up over here. And about the same time you find out you've got cancer. And about the same time you find out that you owe the IRS a fortune. And about the same time this happened and that happened. And you say, why is it all happening at once? And you want to take a gun and blow your brains out. I got a telephone call just the other day from a young lady. She said she had been crying. And she was asking me about suicide. And I said, well, don't do that, you nut. You know, she's, I didn't call her a nut. But that's what I thought. She said, I'm going to take a gun. She said, I've got a gun right here. I said, don't do that. And she said, but this happened and that happened. And she proceeded to tell me a story about her and her boyfriend breaking up. Shoot yourself, man, she should have shouted. And, but did you know, uh, she said, she said, I, I don't want to live. And I said, listen here, sister. You're a Christian, ain't you? Yeah, I'm saved. Big deal. You know, that was the attitude she had. I said, did you know that there are, you know, listen, anybody in here have felt about killing yourself? Let me tell you something. Before you stick your lip out and start feeling sorry for yourself, you better remember that there are millionaires in America this morning, right now, there are millionaires in hospitals that would give one million dollars cash to feel as good as you feel right now. Hey man, you better count your blessings. You better realize God's done a lot for you. I know, I know what you teenagers do. You go on and Nobody, nobody likes me. Everybody hates me. I'm going out and eat worms. Nobody loves me. They're mean to me. No! You better start remembering that God's been good to you. You've got food in your belly. You've got a roof over your head. You was able to walk in this church this morning. Look at, look at what Christ went through on the cross. And it'll make those bitter waters sweet that you won't have to face them like you are, like you are right now. In times of misunderstanding, you ever get misunderstood? That can hurt, you know. That can be some bitter waters when you're trying to do right, trying to do what you ought to, and people misunderstand you. You say, well, Brother Dick, they just don't understand me. I'll tell you what to do. Take the cross of Jesus and throw it in them bitter waters. They didn't understand Him either. He came unto His own, and His own received Him not. The boss said His brethren wouldn't believe on Him. Listen, every time you get misunderstood and it hurts you, take the cross of Christ. That's why they crucified Him. They didn't understand Him. They thought He was a blasphemer. They thought He was a god mother because He claimed to be God's Son. They didn't understand the Son of God. You take the cross and throw it in those bitter waters and they'll turn sweet. You know what you can do? You can take the cross of Christ and throw it in those bitter waters of misunderstanding. And you can say, well, pray the Lord Jesus. That puts me and you in the same boat. They didn't understand you either. And they did. And boy, that makes it sweet. And you say, tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take Him at His word. Now listen, I'm telling you something that will help you this morning. Take the cross of Christ. Throw it in those bitter waters. And they'll be made sweet. My old Charles Waggle. As he, he was a, a, a young man that loved God and his wife walked out of him. Oh, oh, walked out of him. Walked out on him. Walked out on him. Walked out away from him. And brother, she, uh, that's like America. That's the English language, man. That's how come it's so confusing them foreigners over here. They come over here. We drive on the parkway and park on the driveway. I don't know who screwed up our language the way it is. Now, you had to be a genius to learn it if you was from another uh, country. And there's all kinds of things like that. But anyway, she left him. 
And boy, you know what? That old boy sat down and he began to play at the piano. And boy, you know what he done? He didn't say, well, God, you've done me dirty. And I never thought he'd turn out like this. And if you was who you said you was, she wouldn't have left me. And why'd you let this happen? No, he didn't do it. He looked to Jesus Christ. He looked at an old cross on Calvary on a hill 2,000 years ago and sat down at the piano and wrote a song and named it, No One Ever Cared For Me Like Jesus. And that song has been a blessing to thousands of people. And Charles Waggle calls the bitter waters of separation from his wife to become sweet because he put cross in them. You know what's wrong with your marriage this morning? If you're having marriage trouble, Jesus Christ ain't right in the middle of it. And brother, if He's not, it's going to be bitter. It's going to be trouble. You know what's wrong with your life here? A lot of you people, cross in the center of your life. But if you'll put the cross of the Lord Jesus in the middle of your life, it'll get sweet like it ought to be. In times of persecution... Jesus said He'd done it to me, they'll do it to you. In John 15, 18, you know that it hated me before it had you. You boys out preaching on the street, they're going to cuss you. They're going to make fun of you. They're going to call you names. They're going to, they're going to tie up tracks and rip them and throw them on the ground and stomp on them. You're going to be like that. He's talking about one of the young men in Sunday school. We're talking about the young lady uh, last night who uh, was had a glass of lemonade thrown on her in school for standing for the Lord. It's stuff like that's going to happen. You say, boy, these are bitter water, Brother Danny. I just don't think I can stand it. I'll tell you how to do it. Take the cross of Christ, put it in those bitter waters, and so look what they've done to my Savior. They spit on Him. They put nails in His hands. They nailed Him to an old cross. Bless the Lord, if he can, they can do that to Him, they can do it to me. I counted a privilege to be a uh, fellowship with His sufferings that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection. Take the cross of Christ and it will make the bitter waters of persecution turn sweet. Not only that, but a time of darkness. Has it ever got dark in your life? Have you ever come to the place in your life where you just absolutely didn't know what to do? You couldn't see ten foot in front of you. And it just got dark and you couldn't even find God. And you'd try to pray and the Lord wasn't there. Folks, I wish I could tell you. The many, many times. Many, many times it's got dark in my Christian life. I've been preaching for 14 years now. And there has honestly been times, I'm speaking right out of my heart, when, brother, it was strictly by faith. Sometimes it just a dark that I didn't even know if I was saved or not. And I'd read this book, and it'd be dead and cold. And I'd say, God, was I just kidding myself back there? Was... Lord, is it really all real? Are you there, God? Are you up there? Can you hear me? Boy, I begin to think. Boy, I could take heed to this Scripture. And I think I'm in some bitter waters. Man, this is bitter. I can't hardly stand it. Take the cross. You know what happened on the cross? It got dark. And I said, God turned His back on His Son. The Lord Jesus knew what it meant to not know God's presence. The Lord Jesus said, My God, my God, why hast Thou forsaken me? Have you ever got to the place... Hey, listen, you hate to admit it this morning, but has there ever been a time in your life when you got down and said, God, why'd you... Where are you, God? Why ain't you helping me? You just remember, my dear friend, Jesus Christ done the very same thing on that cross when He cried out, God, my God, where are you, God? I can't find you. And God turned His back. It got dark. Boy, you start thinking about that and you think, praise God, the Lord done went through it before me. I'm just on my cross now and it's getting dark in my life. And it'll make those bitter waters sweet. Because you know what comes up after the death on the cross. Resurrection and power and in glory and in a glorified body. And if you can just say, Lord, I'll carry my cross through the midnight. Come morning, there'll be glory for me. Let me encourage you, Christians. Let me, let me give you just a little gouge of encouragement. I don't care how dark a time you're going through. 
If you've been saved by the grace of God, there's a light at the end tunnel. It's going to open up one of these days. We're going to get out of this old veil of tears and hang it up, brother. Hang it up one day. we we'll walk on Golden Street. That'll make them bitter waters not so bitter. Praise God, brother. It'll all be over with one of these days. We'll leave our troubles behind. You know, there's some people, they say, Oh, boy, I, I just... Oh, I just in you know, I just love the world anyway. But they're not a child of God. In a child of God's heart, there's something that said, This world is not my home. I'm just a passion. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't build it home in this world anymore. God put something in my heart on April the nineteenth, nineteen seventy two, that beckons me for a land far away. And Every time I get to feeling sorry for myself and down and out and thinking nobody loves me and I'm about to cry, you know, I'm feeling real pitiful, I can look to the cross of Christ that said He conquered death, hell, and the de- He overcome it all. I'll go home to be with Him one day. And then I can get a smile on my face and say, Glory to God, when I throwed the cross in this thing, it got sweet. Time of sorrow. I was here last night and the church was nearly full of young people boy what a blessed sight it was and I had them all screaming and hollering man we was having a ball and you know and you, the reason I do that is so that they can get this junk out of their head that you can't have a good time at church they had a good time I had a ball brother Man, we we had a best, and the Lord blessed it. But you know, I went into a different atmosphere as I went to the funeral home. And I ran up there to be with the family a few minutes and get back down here because I had to start the service at 7. And I walked through the funeral home, and people's eyes were red and tears were coming out of their face, running down their cheeks. I saw the family there. It looked like they hadn't slept in two nights. I saw them doing like this. I thought about all these kids down here laughing, smile on their face, everything wonderful. Those up there crying. You know, what a paradox. That's a picture of your own life. Or you can be in your life and cutting up on it. The next, the next morning you may be a weeping and crying and thinking the whole world caved in on you. You never know. You never know. Do you know what can happen? What will happen during those times? Look at the cross of Calvary. Bible said Jesus wept. Bible said Jesus died. And let me say something to you this morning. When it comes death time, the only thing that can make those waters sweet is the cross of Christ. Sometimes I put my arm on somebody's shoulder and I'll say, Dad, you can never bring that mother back. You can never bring that boy back. They're gone. And you feel so helpless. What can you say? You can't say, Well, everything's going to be all, you know, they're hurting. Only thing you can do is point them to Jesus. They've got a hope because of the cross of Christ. We have a hope of seeing our loved ones again. If Jesus hadn't died on the cross, there would be no hope. I mean, when somebody died, that'd be it. You'd never see them again. Boy, ain't it a blessing when you go to the funeral home or as I'll be preaching this funeral this afternoon at 3 o'clock that I'll be able to look at those family and on the authority of the Word of God tell them that because a Savior died on a cross, He can take that cross, throw it in these bitter waters. I'll see that boy again because the bitter waters are made sweet by the cross of Jesus. Paul the Apostle was much misunderstood. God showed him again. And he said, I should, God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross. David Brainerd, who was a missionary to the North American Indians, prayed and loved God. One of the greatest men that's ever lived died at the ripe old age of 29. 
prayed himself to death and was had diseases and problems and he used to ride his horse up in New England, way up there in New Hampshire and places and and boy, he'd go up there and tell those Indians about the Lord. And it'd be so cold that he'd nearly freeze to death and he'd fell off in the snow. And he'd get out and he would pray and cough and cough. And when he got through coughing, it looked like little rose petals all over the snow. as little bits of his lungs coming up on the scattered all over the snow. And did you know what? David Brainerd looked at cross of Christ. And when he's getting ready to die, he said, all my desire is to glorify God. Judgment was peculiarly sweet to him. Did you hear that word? Sweet. The bitter waters of sickness and death were made sweet. You ever heard the old saying, life's what you make out of it? Now, that's partly wrong the way the world uses it, but... If you'll take every one of your problems, I don't care what your problem is this morning. Now you think of it. Your husband beat you. Your kids this. Your mama won't take care of you. You you know, something like that. You take whatever your problem is. You look at the cross of Jesus. Take that thing and put it in your problem. And it'll make those things sweet. If you'll do it by faith. John Harper was a Baptist preacher on the Titanic. On its voyage, you know, its maiden voyage when it sunk. And as that big old ship started going down, people were, you know, screaming and hollering. They wouldn't get on them lifeboats. Because they thought that God Himself couldn't sink the Titanic. That's what they said. That thing started going down, brother, and they started bailing out of there right and left. And getting in them lifeboats and the band was a-playing. And somehow or another, John Harper wound up out in the cold, icy Atlantic Ocean. Two miles of water below him. The water was near below freezing. He's floating around that water. You talk about some bitter waters, that's not... How would you like to be in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean? Two o'clock in the morning... Two miles deep, hundreds of miles from anywhere. John Harper floated over and this guy floated next to him and he hollered out, Man, is thy soul saved? And that man said, No, I fear it is not. And John Harper said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Floated around a little bit more. A few waves brought him this way and that way. And directly here he come again. And was floated next to that same guy. And he said, I say, man, is your soul saved? That man said, I can honestly say it is not. He looked back and he said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. What long after that till John Harper went down. About four years later in a testimony meeting up in Canada. There's a man stood up and gave a testimony. And he said, I know probably many of you, I have an unusual testimony. He said, I was on the Titanic. I got saved in the waters of the Atlantic Ocean. John Harper witnessed to me. And right there with two miles of water under my body, I trusted Christ as my Savior. And he stood and said, I'm John Harper's last convert. And I thought about that. I thought, man, if somehow or another we could get that kind of faith. Now, now let's be honest just for a minute, and I'm closing. Take any of us in here this morning, drop us in the ocean at 2 o'clock in the morning, pitch black, dark, cold as ice, and you, what would we do? <laughs> We'd go nuts, man. We'd panic. You'd lose your mind. Now cast it into these waters, and they'll be made sweet. Let's bow our heads. Every head bowed and every eye closed this morning. We need it quiet. I want you to pay attention.
message has been a little unusual this morning in that I was just trying to help the people here that are going through hard times. Everybody these days wanting to hear a counselor or go to a seminar or talk to a psychologist or do that. Listen, brother, what I've told you here this morning, if you'll believe it and apply it to your life, will help you to get over those hard times in your life. Maybe there's somebody here this morning, say, Preacher, it's really bad in my life right now. Seems like things are just all to pieces. I need to get it together. I need to, I need to get my life in order with God. I, I'm going to make a fresh start this morning and look at my problems through the cross of Calvary. Why don't you just come on down here to this altar this morning? Why don't you just get out of your seat, make your way down here, and say, Lord, instead of try, worrying about it and wondering why you've forsaken me and all these problems and everything, I'm just going to turn them over to you. That's right. Come on here. Others need to come this morning. Thank God for these that are already coming. If you want them sweet, if you want to turn those bitter waters sweet, the best thing to do is look at the cross. You say, well, Brother Danny, what I'm going through hurts. It hurt when they put nails in his hand. You say, well, Brother Danny, my friends don't understand me. They didn't understand him when he told them to eat his flesh and drink his blood. So, Brother Danny, they made fun of me and laughed at me. They made fun of Jesus and laughed at him. Why don't you put it that in those bitter waters of your life? Father, do what ought to be done this morning. Dear God, I pray you'd help me, my brothers and sisters. Lord, I, I know I some of the greatest people in the world right here this morning. Lord, they're having troubles and problems and burdens. Maybe some of these teenagers, Lord, I don't know. Maybe going through a lot more than we may realize. No telling what's going on inside of them, Lord. We don't know. God, I pray that whatever it is, that they'll look to the cross. And they'll realize that everything that they're going through, you've already went through. Help them to do it. Help them to do it, oh dear Lord. Help them to come to this altar this morning and just trust you with it get the tree. And may those bitter waters become sweet. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand and sing while these are praying. Maybe others need to come. Just as I am come on. Just come on to Jesus right now. Bitter waters of life can become sweet. You'll trust the Lord. To thee, o Lamb of God, I come. I sing another verse, brother. While we sing the second verse, everybody sing now. Sing. Just there you go. I am and wait. You need to come. Come on right now. To rid my soul of one or blood. Amen. 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 and pray for these on the altar. Some of them's going through very, very troublesome times. Some of those folks up here having bitter waters right now in their life. Let's pray the Lord will help them to by faith cast the cross into those bitter waters that they may become sweet. Oh, dear Lord, you've provided an answer for us. You've provided a remedy. We'll believe it. Dear Lord, we believe tonight, this morning, that through the cross, all of our burdens and problems can become sweet. 
Oh, Lord, then I know they won't go away, but they'll become sweet. One day they'll be behind us. My dear Father, I pray that you'd bless these on the altar. Lord of God, give them what they need. Help them, oh God, to get up the sweetness of Jesus in their heart. Singing, tis so sweet, tis so sweet, just to take you at your word. Lord, do what ought to be done in their hearts. In Jesus' name.